Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, so graph this linear system. And you can see we kind of have a doozy over here. Um, we have x plus y is less than 5, x plus y is greater than negative 5, x minus y is less than 4, x minus y is greater than negative 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to graph both of these equations in slope-intercept form as well as intercept form. I'm sorry, I'm going to split them up. I'm going to graph two of them in intercept form, two of them in slope-intercept form. So therefore, when you're doing a problem, you can kind of identify which way you want to do it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this first. We're going to graph we're going to show you how I'm going to show you how to graph them. I'm going to graph them though as equations, not as inequalities, because I want to get the boundary line graphed. And then what we'll do is we'll test them as inequalities to determine their shading. So therefore, let's get these x plus y is equal to negative 5. And then my last one, x minus y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so when graphing these using slope-intercept form, basically what we want to do is we want to rewrite it in slope-intercept form where y is isolated. So to do that, I'm going to subtract an x on both sides, and I have y equals negative x plus 5. Now, once we have it in slope-intercept form, we want to be able to identify the slope and the y-intercept. Now remember, the slope is going to be your coefficient of your um, x variable, which in this case is going to be a negative 1x plus 5. Well, when we have a negative 1 or any whole number, we always want to be able to write, rewrite that over 1. And when you have a negative, it's important that you make sure that the negative is either going to be in the numerator or the denominator. It does not matter which one. But you're going to want to assign it when you're, doing your, when you're using your slope. So I'll just assign the negative in the numerator, which will help me out. All right. Now, over here, there's a couple different ways we could do this. Again, I could subtract x on both sides, just like I did before. But it's very important to make sure we understand that this is a negative y is equal to um, negative y is equal to a negative x plus 4. Then I divide by negative 1 and divide that negative 1 into both of those. So I have y equals now a positive x minus 4. So therefore, that's very important because now I can see that my, in this case, my slope is negative 4, but my y-intercept, I'll just rewrite as 1 over 1. Um, when using the x-intercept or using the intercept method, for this type of problem, it might be a little bit easier because basically to use the x-intercept method, all you're doing is determining what the x-intercept is. And the x-intercept is when y equals 0. And you're determining the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So all you're basically doing is put 0 in for y and then solve for x, which in this case, x is equal to negative 5. So the x-intercept is going to be negative 5 comma 0. For the y-intercept, I put 0 in for y, or x, I'm sorry. And therefore, I can just say y equals negative 5. So the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 5. Therefore, those are my two coordinates. And I can do the exact same thing over here. Um, let's just do x-intercept. So x-intercept, I put 0 for y. x minus 0 equals negative 2 x equals negative 2. So therefore, the coordinate is negative 2, 0. And then for the y-intercept, I put a 0 in for x minus y equals negative 2. Now again, important to make sure you understand that's a negative y. So I do have to divide by negative 1. So y equals positive 2. So therefore, my coordinate is 0, comma 2. All right, now let's get into the graphing, the fun part. Oh, I kept all that space so I could. Uh, evaluate my inequalities, but I guess I'm going to have to go and erase them. So let's go and graph the boundary lines in each one. And it's very important when we're graphing the boundary lines, especially if you revert back to the equations to help graph, is that you go back and you determine if your boundary line is going to be a part of the solution or not. And it's a part of the solution is when the graph is solid. And we know that it's going to be solid when we have inequality symbols that are greater than or less than. Um, it's going to be not a part of the solution when our line is dashed. And we know to write it not a part of the solution um, when we have inequality symbols that are less than or equal to n. Solid, a part of the solution, is less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. I think I might have messed that up. Um, I think I might have missaid said that before. So in this case, you can see these are all less than or greater than. They're not less than or greater than or, or equal to. So therefore, they are not a part of the solution. And all of our boundary lines are going to be dashed. So let's go and graph this one first. Here, my y-intercept is at 5. So I go up to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have a slope of negative 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1. And again, I'll just graph my dashed line. Okay. Let's go to this one. This one has a y-intercept of negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And has positive 1 over negative 1. So negative 4 over 1 over 1. And again, dashed line. 
So now when doing the intercept method, we don't really have to worry about the y or well, y intercept and slope. We just graph the y intercept and the x intercept. So in this case, the first one, my x intercept is at negative 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my y intercept was at 0, comma, negative 5. Which right here. So again, dash line. And then for my second equation, my y intercept, I think I'm going to sneeze, is negative 2. And my x intercept was 0, 2. And then again, represent that with a dashed line. All right, so now comes in the fun part, which is our testing. All right, And when we get into testing, we don't want to deal with equations because that's not going to help us out. We want to revert back to our inequalities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all of my work that I did here. And I, I am going to replace, oops, I forgot to erase that one. Um, I am going to replace my equation with my inequality symbol. And the only reason why I use the equation is just so I didn't get confused when graphing. Um, you know, you could easily not change it in there. But I just see a lot of students make mistakes. So they get confused and frustrated. And you know, just looking at the inequality symbol, they start thinking ahead. And the main important thing is graph the boundary lines. Then let's worry about the test point. So when choosing a test point, determining where the shade, the easiest thing to do is pick a test point that's going to be easy algebraically. And the best test point to always pick is 0, 0, as long as none of your boundary lines go through 0, 0. Because then you'd be testing the boundary line, which is much easier to determine what, based on the inequality symbol. Um, so now what we need to do is, first of all, we kind of need to remember which graph was related to which equation. But now you can see that my test point is at 0, comma 0. All right. And I guess maybe I should label these. Like that was equation one. That was equation two. <coughs> bless me, bless you. Thank you. Uh, I knew I was going to sneeze. Um, so if you guys remember, the first equation that we graphed was over here. So that was equation one. The second equation that we graphed was over here, which is equation two. Uh, the third one that we, no, that, dang it, I already forgot. That was negative four. That was two. This one was three. And that one was four. Just double check. Three. Yes. OK, I got them. Um, all right, so now what we're going to do is we know our test point is at the coordinate is at the coordinate 0, 0. So I'm going to plug in 0, 0 for my coordinates and see if they work. 0 is less than 5. That's true. So for equation number 1, my test point is true. Therefore, that means since my test point is below my boundary line, that means all the points below my boundary line are going to be true. Then I go to the next one. 0 minus 0 is less than 4. 0 is less than 4. Again, that's true. So I go to equation number 2, which is right here. And since it's true above the line, that means I am going to be graphing above this boundary line. Then we go over here to uh, number 3 and put 0, 0 greater than negative 5. 0 is greater than negative 5. That one is true. So I go to equation number 3. And I say, all right, my test point is true for all of you guys. And then the last one, I do 0 is less than 0 is greater than negative 2, which 0 is greater than negative 2, which again is true. So I go to graph number or boundary line number 4. I agree. So you guys can see that all these boundary lines, actually, the only area, the only region that's true for all my inequalities is this little rectangle that's created in the center, which is not always going to be the case. Um, but in this, in this example, it is. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a system of four inequalities. Thanks. Hello.